Hey, Cobalt DM here, back for another tutorial on using Foundry VTT modules to create immersive and dynamic scenes. Today I want to show you how you can create a scene with a crowd that has ambient dialogue, and also show how you can make your combats bloodier, with dynamic blood splatter on attacks and bloody trails left behind by those who have been wounded. The perfect setting for showcasing this has to be a gladiatorial arena, where a throng of spectators shouts for blood, which your party has, either willingly or not, come to do just that. The first module you'll be looking for to create this scene is NPC Chatter, which allows us to write ambient dialogue that can be triggered on specific tokens at certain intervals. We'll also need the Blood and Guts module that provides all of the violent functionality that we could ever ask for. Finally, you'll want to pick up Michael Gelfi's sound pack, which has a great suite of ambient audio, including a cheering crowd. The first thing we'll need is our scene. There are plenty of arena maps out there, but I'll be using Chepiku's Colosseum. Once you've laid out the scene, we can start on the throngs of spectators. Find a token that you'd like to use as the average spectator, I'll just be using the commoner out of the monster compendium. Once you drag it out, delete it, then go to the newly created actor. Change its actor name to crowd, then go to the prototype token and change its token name to crowd as well. Now just drag it out and copy paste the new token around a couple of times. Don't overdo it, because we don't want every single spectator to be a token, as that would have a substantial effect on your performance. Instead, we'll be creating tiles to act as the rest of the spectators. To do that, you can go into the Tiles tab, drag out a single wide tile, and choose the same image as the tokens. You can find that image in User Data, Systems, D&D 5e, Tokens, Humanoid. Then take this tile and copy-paste it a few times. It's easiest to then select a grouping of tiles, copy that grouping, and paste them around the arena. Don't forget to hold shift and use the directional keys or mouse wheel to have them face the arena. You can also substitute whatever tiles you'd like in your arena to give it a little bit extra variety. Now that we have our spectators, let's give them something to shout. Go to your rollable tables tab and create a folder that must be named NPC Chatter. Then inside that folder, we'll create a new rollable table named Crowd. Inside this table, we can add dialog lines for the crowd to say. Add however many you'd like, and then change the formula to match the amount of lines you made. And make sure to turn off chat display. With the dialog set up, all that's left to do is to make a macro to run the lines. Select an empty space in your action bar to create a new macro, name it whatever you'd like, change it to script, and start by writing this line. Game.npcchatter.turnoffglobaltimerchatter parentheses. We're writing this first because we want to end any other global chatter that might be ongoing before starting this one. On the next line, write game.npcchatter.randomglobalchattereveri parentheses 1000. The 1000 is the time between chatters in milliseconds. Since it's a big crowd and we have a lot of people shouting, we want it to run every second. Then all you need to do is run the macro and you should see different NPCs in the crowd randomly shouting. If you zoom out, you'll probably notice that the chat boxes are small. Unfortunately, that's a limitation of Foundry's baseline chat boxes, and I'm not aware of any module that modifies them at the moment. Nevertheless, it certainly brings the crowd to life, especially with some ambient sound added in. We're not done yet, though, because we need to add some blood to this arena. With the Blood and Guts module activated, let's place a token to test it out. When you've reduced the token's health, you should see a splatter envelop both it and the floor. If we move the token around, it will leave a bloody trail behind it, and the splatter effect will stick to the token as well, no matter how you orient it. You can use a damaged token to paint a scene with blood fairly easily, which could be used for a variety of encounters. We can go into the module settings to modify this effect. If you want all of your blood red, check this, and if you want to show the bleeding trails at 50% health, check this. Though most important is the violence level, which increases or decreases the amount of blood shed. You can also check out the advanced config to try out different styles of blood, or fine-tune the violence level you've currently selected. You can change the splat sizes and densities, as well as changing when the bloodshed is able to occur. You can also change blood on a token-by-token -token basis in their image tab. This is useful for bloodless creatures or modifying tokens used frequently, such as your player's tokens. With these modules in your toolkit, you can create a dynamic and bloody arena fight for your players. Make sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more Foundry VTT guides. I release new ones every Friday, and I'm also working on other D&D content, so stay tuned and thanks for watching.